how casinos are able to predict human behavior. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Whatever happened so to I... Hello Freak Bitches? I live in Las Vegas, which happens to be a good town to think about why the hell can't we moderate, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, when you live there, you see all kinds of wild stuff, right? But to me, what's always been the strangest has been the slot machines. So you've spent time in Vegas. Yeah. It's like they're in the casinos, obviously, but they're in the gas stations. They're in the, the airports, apparently, too. Grocery stores the restaurants the bars and the airport oh well, they're and good. they're not sitting empty right people are playing them around the clock yeah so i'm like what the hell is up with that just plays in your dopamine well and it doesn't make sense because no. everyone knows the house always wins yeah it's not uh... i'm gonna have a maybe this is a hot take i think that the reason and the prevalence of this kind of stuff i think it's gotten even worse recently because uh, I think more people are narcissistic now. I think more people are taught to think that they're special. And because they're taught to think that they're special, they think that they're going to be the one that wins. I think that they prey on narcissism. Yeah, main character syndrome. Exactly. It's like a, a numbing thing. They just yeah. sit there and press the buttons and press the buttons and press the buttons and hope they make money. Yeah. So I, I decide, all right, like, I'm going to find out how a slot machine works. Why Ooh. do people get hooked on slot machines? That's the question. And so I go into journalist mode and I start making calls. Now, the first group of people that I call turns out to be a dead end. So who I call are people who are effectively anti-gambling researchers. Okay. So these are researchers who have a very... So they're trying to ruin everybody's fun. Anti-gambling bent. And they tell me all sorts of sort of strange things. They're like, oh, it's because casinos don't have clocks they're like these myths we've all heard casinos don't have clocks uh slot machines only play in the key of c which relaxes do they not have clocks like who the fuck doesn't have a clock who the fuck needs a clock do you have your phone what people and relaxes their wallet uh, casinos don't have any right angles and right angles uh activate the rational part of your brain and so that's cute. I go, okay. And then I go to an actual casino and there's right angles everywhere, right? The screens are right angles. Uh, no clocks, but guess who else doesn't have clocks? Like most businesses, right? There's yeah, not sure. clocks in Costco. Most restaurants. Or, right. Yeah. It's not normal to have clocks. And then for the... Uh, the I think it's probably less normal now because everybody has a fucking phone audio the key of c i call up a slot machine audio composer now this is a real job you can have in las vegas oh, this guy <laughs> really went there this guy really looked into it and this guy goes where the hell do you hear that he's like i use all keys so i realized that the problem that i'm encountering is that i have called people who want us to stop gambling uh, i need to call people who want us to start gambling all right i gotta follow the money on this so long story short, I talked to a handful of people in town, and this leads me to uh, this casino on the outside outskirts of Las Vegas. Now, it's brand new. It's cutting edge. But the catch is that it's not open to the public. So this place is basically a living, breathing casino, but it's used entirely for research on human behavior. What? Oh, so it's like, uh, you, no, no, this makes sense, right? Because you know how, like, researchers will have, like, rats in a maze? Yeah. It's like a human research facility. I like this. Yeah, so... Really? Who yeah. funds that? Yeah, it's PTR, 73 different yeah. Companies. <laughs> so there's wow. gambling companies that are involved, but oh also a bunch of big tech companies who are on the Fortune 500. So I, I go there, and... That's because a lot of big tech companies utilize the same type of gambling mechanics. Like, a, a lot of things utilize the fundamentals of gambling. And it's, it's like I said, it's a legit casino. How big is it? It's, um, I would say, I mean, it's not the size of a normal casino, gotcha. like a sprawling Ooh, strip yeah. one. It's probably about the size of your, everything you have here, maybe a little bigger, but they have hotel rooms. It's like a Walmart. How big is that? Yeah. That big? Oh, what the yeah, fuck? It's That's in this huge. big um, office shit. building, basically. Okay. And wow. they're basically looking at how Everything that happens in a casino affects human behavior. So 
uh, how does room design and the technology we're using in rooms affect behavior? How does betting with, say, an AI bot versus an actual human impact betting? Now, when I'm there, I meet... So, like, yeah, have, like, an AI bot that's programmed to make you spend more money. I like that. That's smart. You know, they have that in Honkai Star Rail. Uh, there's a character named Silverwolf. And there's, like, a thing, like, your character has, like, a smartphone. I'm not even kidding. And, like, the, the characters will text you, and the Silver Wolf character will sometimes text you to spend money on the game. Seriously. Meet with, to bring it back to slot machines, I meet with a guy who designs slot machines. So the reason that these things are so entrancing to people, it tracks back to this uh, behavior loop that I call the scarcity loop. And this is a basically a loop, looping behavior that when people do it, they tend to get hooked on it very easy. Oh. So it's got three parts. It's got opportunity, unpredictable rewards, and quick repeatability. So opportunity, you have an opportunity to get something of value. Big money. In the case of a slot machine, it's money. That's right. right? 2,000x. Uh, two unpredictable rewards. You know you're going to get the thing of value if you continue the behavior. Yeah. But you don't know when. That's right. Know. That's why you never stop gambling, guys. That's the solution. If you're losing, the only way to win is to keep spending more money. How valuable it's going to be. So with the slot Debt machine maxing, game, yep. when those reels are spinning, you could win nothing. You could basically lose your money. You could win a couple Break dollars. Yeah. Or you could win a life-changing amount of money. That's right. There's a fantastic range of things that could happen. And then three... Uh, quick repeatability, you can immediately repeat the behavior. So with slot machines, the average player plays about 16 games a minute. And that's different from all other habits. Like most habits, you don't... 16 games a minute. That's pretty fucking fast. Jesus. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like four or five seconds. Yeah. Don't immediately repeat them. Now, the reason that people are so interested in this companies casinos is because that this sort of three-part system i just laid out it can get people to repeat a lot of other behaviors too yeah so it's in social media it's in video games sports gambling oh, uh yeah. it's in dating apps even companies uh like gig work economy companies are oh dating apps i actually saw there was this uh there's this thing i saw today I i'll i'll show you real quick Speaking of people that are addicted to dating apps, look at this. So this guy, um, he, uh, it showed like his matches and everything. So he's, you know, nice guy, uh, probably thinks a lot about the Roman Empire and, uh, right swipes 1 million. Okay. Matches 719 chats, 217 dates, one relationships, zero bro. This guy He's hooked on the Gamba machine. And the thing is that, like, did y'all see? I don't know if I if I found this or not. Let me see if I did. Apparently, Tinder was trying to add, like, a different, like, section for people that were going to spend something like $500 a, a, a month or something like that on Tinder. Because people spend extra money on Tinder to get elevated. Yeah, a $500 a month plan. I'm not even kidding. Using it to get people Tinder to work select. longer hours. It's being yeah, remember like McDonald's did that because they had like McNuggets and then they had chicken selects and they were just like more expensive nuggets. So like Tinder saw that McDonald's did that and they're like, okay, well, let's just do the same thing. Leveraged by the financial industry in a lot of personal finance apps and on and on and on. It's become, uh, it's been mm -hmm. embedded in so many of the products, even institutions that influence people's lives because it is so captivating to us. Oh, it's, it's RNG. Basically, what he's saying is RNG. You get hooked on this three-part system. Mm. And so when, when you're talking about, like, gig economy stuff, like, uh, you're talking about, like, Uber and yeah, things, like things along those lines? driving for Uber. And know. so how, how do they use that? So things like um, unpredictable rewards get put up in front of a driver yep. to get them to drive into an area of town that Uber might want them to be in. There's also unpredictable rewards. What do you... Yeah. So like you might get um, say, oh, if you drive here, like you're whatever will you you'll make X amount more money. 
Oh. Right, and it sort of pops up unpredictably. Also, they'll they'll incentivize you that they they offer you more money to go to a different part of town. Yeah, or dropping in queues that saying like, "Hey, this is." Well, what it's also like just tipping, right? It's like some Uber drivers will drive somebody and they'll get a tip for like twenty dollars, and then other times they'll tip somebody and they'll get robbed. Where we are, you're going to make more money. Today, That's R and G. Oh. Um, if you think about it in terms of something like social media, it's like the opportunity is to get, say, status or likes mm -hmm. or whatever it is, right? And then, say, a person posts, and then the rewards become totally unpredictable, right? You might get two likes, which is like, oh, that wasn't great. Or you might get hundreds of likes, which is like, oh, my God, mm. that's amazing. I so, think that's why TikTok is so popular, too, is that TikTok is much more random with which things get pushed by the algorithm. And because it's much more random, it gives people that are... You know, maybe like their video shouldn't be that that popular, but it makes the video that popular anyway, just because of that. And so it keeps them addicted to like continuing to upload and continuing to consume content on the website. The same exact architecture as a slot machine. And then mm -hmm. you check and recheck. You're repeating the behavior all day. And um, this loop, the reason that we're so attracted to it, it goes back to evolution. So I talked to this, uh, once I learned how this kind of loop pulls people in, it's really what slot machines lean on to get people to repeat the behavior. I call up a psychologist. He's this old school dude from the University of Kentucky who's been studying psychology since the late 60s. His name's Thomas Sental. And um, he described, he basically explained, this likely goes back to evolution and finding food. Please get it twisted. So if you think about hunter-gatherers, the thing you have to do every day is find food, but it's a random, it's random whether you're going to find the food or not. So you go to point A, you don't find any food. Go to point B, you don't find any food. You go to point C, there's a buffalo. No food. Oh. Point D, oh my buffalo. god, it's a giant berry bush full of food. There it is. And that saves your life, right? Yeah. Mm. So that search, that repeat searching, really pushes us and grabs our attention because it used to help us survive in the past. Oh. And there's even, I mean, if you want to get down the rabbit hole. I'm not sure if I entirely agree with that as a complete reason because there's been a lot of studies. This is called a variable reinforcement loop and it's actually been observable in rats. Uh, like I think it's Sigmund Freud that did this. So I, I don't entirely think that's true because if, it, if it's something that's chosen, now you could also make the argument that rats also had that same evolutionary thing that like they work that way too but i don't think it's anything that's unique to people because this is something that is uh it's observable with animals as well and it, there's even um things like what are called near misses in slot machines which is when you kind of almost win right bro might... they have that dude how many times have you guys seen csgo spins where like they go right over the yellow one and it's like ee Ooh, bro, that is dirty. Two yeah. lemons. Yeah, two lemons. And the other lemon just barely passes yeah. by. Oh. Barely passes by or losses disguised as wins. Do you know mm. what those are? Mm -hmm. No. So that's when, uh, let's say you bet $1 and you quote unquote win 50 cents. So, oh. right. So you don't lose everything, but you win 50 cents. Now we tend to rea react to that as if we're winning when they, oh. when they study uh, gamblers. And that's also embedded in the search. Oh, that, that is true. Yeah. I mean, well, usually that's what happens with a lot of slot machines. It, it's actually rare for you to actually win $0. Usually you win 17% rake back, you know, like 53% rake back, something like that. Like, they don't just, like, cause you to lose 100% every time. And I've watched a lot of fucking Gamba streams. Well, I know this. For food, right? You might, let's say you're hunting, you're like, oh, we got a big kill on our hands. And then you whiff, and the animal's on its way. It's like, damn, that is a, that's a, you're right? dead. that's the near miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or you come up on a berry bush. What'd you watch? And I think it's let's funny say to watch. it took you, you burned 500 calories looking for this thing and it only contains 200 calories worth of food. Mm. And so all Ooh. of these sort of evolutionary parts of this system that we used to fall into as we evolved are now in slot machines and in turn now being used by a lot of big tech companies and different industries. Sort so of. they just trick the human reward system. Yeah, yeah, it mimics these sort of ancient pathways, more or less.
And gambling is, to me, is one of the most peculiar ones. Yeah, again, I, I think that it's already been proven by science and experimentation that this is not something that's unique to humans. But I think that if you're going to make this argument, like a hunter-gatherer, like, fucking caveman argument, you're just going to easily be able to say that animals follow that same paradigm in current life. So I don't think because, it even disproves um, what he's saying. It's so overwhelming for people that are hooked on gambling. It's such a mental health issue. It's such a, an addiction. And when you see people that are just like chasing it and they just can't stop, it's like I always wonder like what pathway is being hijacked? Like what, what is I think that a lot of the people are chasing losses because like that's what happens. Like people are originally chasing wins and then after they lose a certain amount of money, I think they're chasing losses and trying to get their money back. And they tell themselves, as soon as I break even, I'm just going to get out of this. But they're never going to break even. So it's like, even if they win a little bit, then maybe they go back to the first mindset. And like, like I think Slicker is probably the best example of that. The Yo King, I'm begging you, this that, that guy. Um, what happened with him is that like he was just trying to make the money back to pay back other people but he couldn't do that but the only way he could make any money was by gambling so he just kept taking more money and putting it in hoping that eventually he would win is about human beings that want to risk like literally all of their money on a roll of the dice yeah. or on a spin of the roulette wheel or on a hand of cards like what is that yeah this is a good question. Now, this this Zental guy that I told you about, he does a lot of research on pigeons. Ooh. So he can basically turn This isn't going to be good. This is not going to be good, bro. Like, whenever he starts it off and he says, well, you have to understand the way pigeons work. Uh-oh. pigeon into a degenerate gambler in like two minutes he'll give a them, pigeon a pigeon dude he'll give them <laughs> yeah i said that the sounds same cruel thing. i said the same thing yeah. when i was talking to isn't him. life hard enough as a pigeon yeah he uh so he'll, he'll no it's not they just sit around mcdonald's parking lot and eat fries that's the easiest job ever they shit on people's car like what do you mean <laughs> yeah no things are fine for a pigeon Get pigeons who, you know, they live in these cages and he'll give them the option to play a game where they, every other peck, they get, say, 15 units of food. So peck, no food, peck, 15 units of food. But then they have an option to play a second game. And this second game is very much a gambling game in that they get food about every fifth peck, but it's random, right? Ooh. So you could go peck, peck, food, peck, peck. The next one could be food, peck, 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 right? So it's just kind of like a slot machine mm -hmm. and they get <laughs> just imagine them fucking banging their head on the gamble one just <laughs> <laughs> they're so stupid so they turn people into pigeons more food playing maybe the they turn game. pigeons they into people minutes. if you do the math it makes a lot more sense to play the game where you get every <laughs> other, one more pack. right? Every other pack is getting you food. It adds up to a lot more food. But what he finds is that oh the pigeons consistently play the slot machine game. Ah, there it is. Ninety-seven percent of pigeons will. I knew they that were game. stupid. Right, but they're not risking anything. They're not risking anything, right? But it's so how's still that gambling. They're still putting in the effort to have to play the game. Yeah, but well, you don't have to risk in order to gamble. Like people do mount runs, and they're not really risking anything except for time, which is anything that you're going to risk. Anything you do is you're risking time. So yeah, I mean, no, it's just it's fundamentally compelling. It's obvious. Like the the rewards are greater. So they know that if they just keep pecking, talking it about this, makes me want to do more spends. They're going to get a bigger supply of food. They don't get a bigger supply though, because they'll get fifteen every other peck right. versus yeah, twenty every today. fifth peck. So if you put in a hundred packs, you're going to get more food playing the one where it's you get food every other time. Right, yeah. but it's still not gambling because the pigeon just sees a larger pile of food with the more pecks, so just wants the larger pile of food, so it just keeps going. It's I, I think. Joe here is uh, he's got kind of a point, right? Because like the, he's saying the pigeon is perceiving it as the one that's randomly pecking. 
Like he's not accurately able, like the the experiment does not accurately control for the pigeon just perceiving there being more value because there's a larger amount of food given whenever the gamba thing happens, which is like he's kind of right about this, but there's so many other studies that do prove that it's something that's intrinsic to the mechanism and not the size of the food. But he like in a vacuum, I think that he's right. It's not like they're risking all their food. Right, right. Um, so I don't think it's a gambling thing. Well, the larger the larger pile of food comes from the predictable rewards. Yes, right. If you do every other, right? Yeah, every other is how you but, would get the biggest like a pile. Like pigeon's not going to be able. Like pigeons, uh, I'm like ninety nine percent sure pigeons. They're fucking pigeons. If you show them a bigger pile of food, they're not going to be able to add up other piles of food and do the math in their pigeon head of like, hmm, I wonder which one has got more in like a longitudinal perspective if I do 700 pecks. You know, which one is going to be a higher, you know, seed yield ratio? No, bro. They're fucking pecking. That's all they're doing. <laughs> They're just pecking. They ain't thinking about shit, bro. They ain't got a thought in their head. Food, But you don't get the biggest pile in one jump. One dump, right? The one where it's every five that's a larger quantity of food. Yeah, so you get 20. Yeah, see, that's not gambling. Why is it not gambling? Because it's just more effort. It's more effort to get a bigger pile. So he would argue that... The They're just dumb. They just can't say, oh, it's every other one. Well, all they see... Is, is the that they're getting, you know, whatever, 15 yeah. units versus 20? Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. So all they know is 20 units. Like, oh, this one gives 20 units. Just keep pecking. I don't think they're smart enough to figure that out. I think they're just like, keep going. Keep, oh, there's 20. Keep going. Keep going. 20. But there's yeah. not a risk. So here's what I'll tell you. He would argue. And I don't think that you need a risk in order to um, take advantage of a variable ratio reinforcement system. I, I don't I don't think you you I, a risk adds stakes and it makes it maybe more compelling but I don't think that you need a risk and a lot of biologists would they would say you know there's this theory called the optimal foraging theory it says that animals will expend the least amount of energy to get the most amount of food oh right? I do so that. over time they're expending a lot less energy to get so he just explained DoorDash more food and so here's where it gets interesting though is that to sort of bring it back to why do people fall into this why would someone bet their entire fortune on a roulette wheel or whatever is that when he will put pigeons in a sort of wild environment so where he keeps them is in these pigeon cages where they kind of live alone it's you know it's a basic cage when he puts them in a cage that mimics the wild so it's this giant cage that has like roosts it's got cliffs it's got other pigeons it's very much like they would have to live in the wild and then he throws them back to choose a game they start choosing the optimal game oh yeah interesting yeah uh, they're bored yeah exactly yeah so like is it because they're gambling because they're bored because there are other experiments that are done like for example uh there was an experiment with rats and I'm not sure if I'm quoting this right. So if I'm not, I'm just full of shit. And I don't know what I'm talking about. But if I remember correctly, uh, the there was like a, a rat that was given like just an empty room with like nothing in it. And then two bottles of water. And one bottle of water was just water. And the other bottle of water had drugs in it. And the rat in the empty room drank the drug water and died. And the rat in the other room with other rats and other things to do that were for rats didn't drink the drug water and didn't die. So it could possibly be a stimulation issue that like they're not properly stimulated. And so they seek that stimulation through something else. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I, I'm not sure I know enough about like the surrounding body of knowledge to like really have a conclusion on that. Yeah, but there's a video that was uh, I wanted to watch that. I thought that would be really interesting, especially for like how much people talk about Gamba stuff on Twitch and everything like that. They're doing it because the pigeons are trying to rebuild their lives. True, bro. They're going to become billionaires.